March 22nd, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Deuteronomy chapter 9 and 10 from the Old Testament. Listen, Israel, today you are about to cross the Jordan so you can dispossess the nations there, people greater and stronger than you who live in large cities with extremely high fortifications. They include the Anakites, a numerous and tall people whom you know about and of whom it is said who is able to resist the Anakites. Understand today that the Lord your God who goes before you is a devouring fire. He will defeat and subdue them before you. You will dispossess and destroy them quickly just as he has told you. Do not think to yourself after the Lord your God has driven them out before you. Because of my own righteousness, the Lord has brought me here to possess this land. It is because of the wickedness of these nations that the Lord is driving them out ahead of you. It is not because of your righteousness or even your inner uprightness that you have come here to possess their land. Instead, because of the wickedness of these nations, the Lord your God is driving them out ahead of you in order to confirm the promise he made on oath to your ancestors to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Understand, therefore, that it is not because of your righteousness that the Lord your God is about to give you this good land as a possession, for you are a stubborn people. Remember, don't ever forget how you provoked the Lord your God in the desert. From the time you left the land of Egypt until you came to this place, you were constantly rebelling against him. At Horeb you provoked him, and he was angry enough with you to destroy you. When I went up the mountain to receive the stone tablets, the tablets of the covenant that the Lord made with you, I remained there forty days and nights, eating and drinking nothing. The Lord gave me the two stone tablets written by the very finger of God, and on them was everything he said to you at the mountain from the midst of the fire at the time of that assembly. Now at the end of the forty days and nights, the Lord presented me with the two stone tablets, the tablets of the covenant. And he said to me, Get up, go down at once from here, because your people whom you brought out of Egypt have sinned. They have quickly turned away from the way I commanded them and have made for themselves a cast metal image. Moreover, he said to me, I have taken note of these people, they are a stubborn lot. Stand aside, and I will destroy them, obliterating their very name from memory, and I will make you into a stronger and more numerous nation than they are. So I turned and went down the mountain while it was blazing with fire. The two tablets of the covenant were in my hands. When I looked, you had indeed sinned against the Lord your God, and had cast for yourselves a metal calf. You had quickly turned aside from the way he had commanded you. I grabbed the two tablets, threw them down, and shattered them before your very eyes. Then I again fell down before the Lord for forty days and nights. I ate and drank nothing because of all the sin you had committed, doing such evil before the Lord as to enrage him. For I was terrified at the Lord's intense anger that threatened to destroy you, but he listened to me this time as well. The Lord was also angry enough at Aaron to kill him, but at that time I prayed for him too. As for your sinful thing that you had made, the calf, I took it, melted it down, ground it up until it was fine as dust, and tossed the dust into the stream that flows down the mountain. Moreover, you continued to provoke the Lord at Tabara, Massa, and Kibroth Hatava. And when he sent you from Kadesh Barnea and told you, Go up and possess the land I have given you. You rebelled against the Lord your God and would neither believe nor obey him. You have been rebelling against him from the very first day I knew you. I lay flat on the ground before the Lord for forty days and nights, for he had said he would destroy you. I prayed to him, O Lord God, do not destroy your people, your valued property that you have powerfully redeemed whom you brought out of Egypt by your strength. Remember your servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Ignore the stubbornness, wickedness, and sin of these people. 
Otherwise the people of the land from which you brought us will say, The Lord was unable to bring them to the land he promised them. And because of his hatred for them, he has brought them out to kill them in the desert. They are your people, your valued property, whom you brought out with great strength and power. At that same time, the Lord said to me, Carve out for yourself two stone tablets like the first ones and come up the mountain to me. Also make for yourself a wooden ark. I will write on the tablets the same words that were on the first tablets you broke, and you must put them into the ark. So I made an ark of acacia wood and carved out two stone tablets just like the first ones. Then I went up the mountain with the two tablets in my hands. The Lord then wrote on the tablets the same words, the Ten Commandments, which he had spoken to you at the mountain from the middle of the fire at the time of that assembly, and he gave them to me. Then I turned, went down the mountain, and placed the tablets into the ark I had made. They are still there, just as the Lord commanded me. During those days, the Israelites traveled from Beeroth ben Yakin to Mosirah. There Aaron died and was buried, and his son Eliezer became priest in his place. From there they traveled to Gadgoda, and from Gadgoda to Jotpatha, a place of flowing streams. At that time, the Lord set apart the tribe of Levi to carry the Ark of the Lord's Covenant, to stand before the Lord to serve him, and to formulate blessings in his name, as they do to this very day. Therefore, Levi has no allotment or inheritance among his brothers. The Lord is his inheritance, just as the Lord your God told him. As for me, I stayed at the mountain as I did the first time, forty days and nights. The Lord listened to me that time as well and decided not to destroy you. Then he said to me, Get up, set out leading the people, so that they may go and possess the land I promised to give to their ancestors. Now Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you except to revere him? to obey all his commandments, to love him, to serve him with all your mind and being, and to keep the Lord's commandments and statutes that I am giving you today for your own good. The heavens, indeed the highest heavens, belong to the Lord your God, as does the earth and everything in it. However, only to your ancestors did he show his loving favor, and he chose you, their descendants from all peoples as is apparent today. Therefore, cleanse your heart and stop being so stubborn. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great, mighty, and awesome God who is unbiased and takes no bribe, who justly treats the orphan and widow, and who loves resident foreigners giving them food and clothing. So you must love the resident foreigner, because you were foreigners in the land of Egypt. Revere the Lord your God, serve him, Be loyal to him and take oaths only in his name. He is the one you should praise. He is your God, the one who has done these great and awesome things for you that you have seen. When your ancestors went down to Egypt, they numbered only 70. But now the Lord your God has made you as numerous as the stars of the sky. God, I love how this chapter ends. With the recounting of the promise you made to Abraham, their ancestor, about how when all of this started, they numbered only 70. But now you, God, has made them as numerous as the stars of the sky. Again, your promise to Abraham. And in your promise to Abraham, all the way back in Genesis, you talked about not only descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and that you would give them this land... But you also go on to say, and through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed. All nations. I think it is just incredible to me, and the Bible talks about this a lot, how you allow Gentiles to come into your promise. And you knew even back at the very beginning when you were making a promise to Abraham that although Israel were your people at the time, that eventually someone like me would be allowed to be loved by you, shown mercy by you, 
forgiven by you. Okay, that's just crazy awesome, God. It's absolutely amazing that you were talking about me. You were talking about my friends. You were talking about, about the people in my church. You were talking about the people who live in Kentucky. You were talking about all of these people who exist in my world nowadays. All the way back in Genesis, through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed. God, that is just so amazing. We forget that before any of this started, you already knew we would exist. You already knew we would be your children. You already knew that even though during what we call the Old Testament times, that there would be a ritual of obedience for transgressions and forgiveness, that eventually you would send your son, Jesus Christ, as a buffer between you and your anger for us, your rightful anger, your just anger, uh, and what we were doing, and that his, his crucifixion, his resurrection, would go on to fulfill what you promised, which is to bless all nations on earth, that would allow Gentiles to come into your family. God, thank you for that. I truly can't imagine what my life would be like if I had to go through it without you. I know I couldn't do it. But even just thinking about it, I'm just baffled at how I would make it through day by day without you and your grace and your mercy and your forgiveness and your guidance and your discipline and your love. Thank you for including me in that promise all those years ago at the very beginning of the Bible. I love you so much. In your son's name we pray. Amen.